Hi everyone, my name is Diane and I am a clinical exercise physiologist with True Fitness. So today's mini physical activity and health workshop will focus on aerobic exercise for middle-aged and older adults. So the first thing we should talk about is how much aerobic exercise you should do for your health. And we look at this in the context of the FIT principle. So in terms of frequency, we are all recommended to do aerobic exercise most days of the week, so five to seven. And this is regardless of our age, our fitness level or our ability. In terms of intensity, we should be able to work at moderate intensity. And an example of this would be if I was walking beside you, so we're walking, we're doing our physical activity, but you should be able to talk to me, so you should be comfortable. That's moderate intensity if you can do the talk test. If you can't talk as we walk, well, then the intensity is too high and you don't need to be in that zone to achieve the health benefits from aerobic exercise. So the talk test is a good guide as to whether you're in the right intensity or not. In terms of time, we should be doing a minimum of 30 minutes in each session of aerobic exercise. And that's, I want to stress that that's a minimum. So there's a dose response relationship between aerobic exercise and your health. Generally, the more you do, the more health benefits you get from it. Uh, the one exception is up to the point of overtraining, but that's for uh, generally, usually for a different population. Um, so it doesn't have to be continuous. So if you're new to exercise and you want to get started, well then why, why not start in five to 10 minute bouts and accumulate this. So you might do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunchtime and 10 minutes in the evening. It doesn't have to be continuous for you to get the health benefits from aerobic exercise. In time, it would be ideal that you can progress to do 30 continuous minutes because the fitness that you gain from that is, is also very good for your health. But it doesn't have to be continuous to start with. In terms of the type, there are lots of different types you can do. So for the, the easiest one is probably walking in terms of accessibility. Um, dancing. Dancing is a great form of aerobic exercise and it's fun and is a great option for many people. Cycling, swimming, of course jogging and running, but they would be of the higher intensities um, if you're trying to work on your fitness training. Um, circuit training as well, and of course the Slauncher Care training sessions that we do every week with our Slauncher Care participants. So why do we want you to do aerobic exercise? Well, there are numerous reasons and we'll start with the physical benefits for your health. So the first thing that it does is it increases your cardiovascular fitness. And we call this an independent predictor of health because basically the fitter you are, the less risk you have of developing a range of clinical conditions such as type two diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And this would be independent of things like weight. So even if a person is, we we'll say, in the overweight category, the fact that they're fit, it's very, it's still very health protective. Um, so basically, the higher level of fitness that you have, the better it is for your health. That's what we call an independent predictor of health. So we often get asked about the best types of exercise for weight loss. And so this would be the area I conducted my PhD in. And just basically, to keep a long story short, Aerobic exercise, even in the form of walking and the lower intensity aerobic exercise, the adaptations that happen in the body really are to increase fat oxidation, which means that you increase the amount of body fat that you use to produce energy for activities that you do all day. So it basically teaches your body how to use body fat for fuel. And this is obviously a very beneficial adaptation for health, but also weight loss if it's something that you're interested in. So you would need a higher contribution from your aerobic exercise for weight loss. And what we did was we picked a number of the clinical conditions that we have in our current Slauncher Care project, project so that we could show the specific benefits for, for some of those conditions. And one of the excellent benefits is, is that there's a 24 hour blood pressure lowering effect once you complete a bout of aerobic exercise. So Basically, the adaptations that happen in the body during and post exercise reduce your blood pressure for 24 hours after. And for that reason, we would recommend that if you have high blood pressure or you are being treated for high blood pressure, even though it may be appearing as normal because you're being treated for high blood pressure, it would be very beneficial for you to do some form of aerobic exercise every day to help you treat and manage your high blood pressure. 
Another very important benefit is, it, is that aerobic exercise reduces your blood sugar levels during and after training. So basically the muscle contraction that you are doing during your aerobic exercise um, utilizes your blood sugar levels. So it reduces them. And this adaptation continues for a number of hours after your training session. So in terms of anyone who has pre-diabetes or insulin resistance, or in fact, type two diabetes, which of which we have numerous um, incidences on our course, we've been asking our, our participants to take their blood sugars before and after each training session for the first number of training sessions so that we can assess their metabolic response to training. And the normal response would be that the blood sugars would reduce and and this is this is for all of us but it, it's more evident for people who have di type 2 diabetes only because they are, they're actually checking their blood sugars and um, so it's really really important in the treatment and management of type 2 diabetes and if you have type 2 diabetes and you're doing exercise training it would be beneficial for you to check your levels before and after to see what your metabolic response is and of course you can contact us if you'd like some advice on that that's no problem at all we've been working with our own participants to help them with theirs as well um, it absolutely improves your cholesterol profile for all of our participants who have high cholesterol issues. So it reduces the total amount of cholesterol you have. It improves your LDL cholesterol and your triglycerides. And importantly, it also increases your HDL cholesterol, which is often the generic term on this would be your good cholesterol, but it's, it's heart protect, protective cholesterol. And you actually want that to be high and well within the normal ranges. So it does everything it needs to do to improve your cholesterol profile. It absolutely decreases the risk of many chronic conditions like type, type, type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease because of the positive impact it has on your blood sugar levels, your blood lipid levels, your blood pressure, your heart, how your blood vessels respond, your muscle function, and so on. So it does improve many chronic conditions. And importantly for our cardiac patients, one of the really positive adaptations to training is that your fitness level improves and how we can see that easily and test it is that your resting heart rate will be lower than it was before you started training and at every intensity of exercise so you know low intensity moderate intensity and high intensity your new trained heart rate will be lower than it was before you started training so that basically means all day during your daily activities and all uh, during all of the times that you do your exercise your heart rate is lower for a given effort and that means that your heart is not working as hard for a particular effort so it's reducing the workload on your heart all day long and that's a really positive benefit if you have cardiovascular issues and if you don't it's still a really positive benefit so the fitter you are the, 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 the less stress is on your cardiovascular system all day long Okay, um, it does a lot more things. In the interest of time, I will just say that it improves the functioning of your heart, your lungs, your muscles, your brain, and basically uh, everything that we need to function well and be healthy. Um, and there would be extensive body of research to support that. It would be anti-aging in terms of the, the adaptations to aging that we mentioned in a previous workshop in terms of reducing um, the size of your muscle mass and the function of muscle and how aging affects your blood vessels and your heart and so on. Um, it basically slows down that process and it ameliorates it, uh, meaning so it makes it better. So often you might hear that term, the anti-aging effects of exercise. And this is true in, in, in terms that it slows down the normal physiological process of aging. Okay, so it's also really important to talk about the, the benefits of aerobic exercise in the context of mental health, which of course is extremely important. And particularly during this time of COVID, um, which is really, really testing most of us at the moment. But what we have evidence for in terms of scientific research, but also for our own personal um, evidence and also what we see in clinic all of the time is the aerobic exercise helps improve your sleep. It decreases anxiety levels. It increases positive mood. We can think more clearly. We are certainly calmer uh, and uh, we feel calm, calmer, but in terms of, of stress hormones and everything else as well, it decreases mental stress, increases self-esteem, it decreases depression, particularly if it can be done in a social environment. Now, obviously there are challenges with that at the moment with COVID, but if restrictions allow, 
we would really make recommend that you can do a socially distanced walk or something with a friend uh, because the, the benefits from this are absolutely fantastic. And also if it's a fun exercise, um, that makes a big difference as well. And while I'm on the, the topic of exercise and mental health, I just want to mention two terms that you may or may not have heard of before, which are green exercise and blue exercise. So green exercise is basically being active in a green space. So like a park, the woods, the mountains. And blue exercise is exercise in a blue space or on or near the water. And what we know from recent research is that if we can be active in those environments, the, the health benefits in terms of mental health are magnified. And in Ireland, we're extremely lucky to have so many of these opportunities. Um, in Leash in particular, where we're, where we're based for our Salon to Care project, we have so many blue and green opportunities for exercise. So we recommend that all of our Salon to Care participants, if they can, at least try to get to some blue space or green space a couple of times a week because of the benefits that you get from there. And of course, exercise is medicine. Right. So we always finish our health workshops with some type of action. So your health homework for this week is write down how many minutes of aerobic exercise you currently do per day per week. So analyze this and see where you're at. For our salon to care participants, they train with us twice per week. And in each session, they do 30 minutes of aerobic exercise because the rest is made up of resistance, flexibility and balance exercise. So do you meet the recommendations for health? If you don't, can you? So can you identify opportunities in your day where you can increase the minutes of aerobic exercise you do and make a plan? So literally every minute counts when it comes to health. And simple things that you can do is, for example, take the stairs instead of the lift. Can you take a 10 minute walk break at lunchtime? Depending on your stride length and rate, you could accumulate anywhere between 500 and 1000 steps during those 10 minutes, which is massive for your health. Um, so instead of racing for that car space beside the shop that you want to go to, can you just park a little further away and get a couple of minutes of aerobic exercise each way? Um, I, I just I often think that people don't realize how important those small things are for health, because if you take small actions like this a number of times a day, they accumulate into massive things by the end of the day and the end of the week and your health overall. Um, so can you have a walking phone meeting? So if you're having a meeting, can you actually, even if it's around your office, can you can you walk Can you get your steps in as you're having the meeting? Um, can you pair up with a walking buddy in the evening? Obviously, a socially distanced walking buddy if the restrictions allow. But um, by doing this, you'll get all of the benefits of the social interaction as well. Can you get the kids involved and can you bring them for a walk in the evenings? It's absolutely fantastic for them, especially after a day in school before they go to bed. It will help them relax later. It's just so good for their health. Um, so can you achieve 30 minutes every day or at least five days a week? And think of all of the health benefits you will get that we just mentioned in terms of physical and mental health. So to help our salon to care participants increase the amount of aerobic work that we, they do, we have provided them with additional resources such as a home-based circuit training video. So if you'd like to avail of those free resources but you're not part of our salon to care project, please do contact us and we'll happily send them out to you. So it's either for the attention of myself, Diane or John and it would be www.truefitness.ie or info at truefitness.ie. So in terms of recommended reading, this is only a very small workshop about aerobic exercise and the benefits of it. Um, there are decades of research to show all of the benefits that we get from doing this type of training. Because our Salon to Care project is specifically looking at benefits for middle aged and older adults, um, the ACSM position stand is a nice paper if you want to look at the, if you're looking for the, the references that would go with the physical and mental health benefits, for example, that I mentioned in the presentation. Um, so this is a nice review paper just to get started on. 